Okay, so we're gonna be working on getting this walling up right here. I've already started cutting them out. I have this one at 56 inches and this one at 55 and a quarter. So I'm gonna be kind of working up and going slower and slower as it is curved. Anyways guys, we've got these two pieces in so I'm gonna go ahead and start mounting them up. I'm gonna cut two more at 55 inches and then we're gonna see if we can just slip it in as like a wall. I've just cut those out. As you guys can tell, I now have a partial wall in here. I'm gonna see if I can just slip it in. Start screwing them into this board and keep mounting up. Now I'm just screwing everything in. We cut out another piece right here. This overhangs about that much, so this is 55 and a half inches. I'm gonna try and do probably 54 inches because that'll cut it down an inch because it curves in a lot right there. I just got that up. I figured out the most tricky part, which I didn't know how I was gonna mount it other than that one center brace right there. I was able to just stick it out an extra half inch, an inch right here on the top two, secure it right there. And then of course we have our middle, the tongue and groove helps. And then on the very bottom back right here, I don't know if you guys can tell, I screwed in through the metal into the wood. So that makes it solid on this side, solid, solid, solid. So it's anchored diagonally, which with the tongue and groove really strengthens that up. I'm actually really surprised. I didn't think I was gonna be able to find a solution that fast. Man, I'm solving the impossible problems today, guys. I started using some of this smaller wood um, tongue and groove that I had for making the bottom half, and I have this pattern. It's gonna be the double and then the single, single, single going down, because that's gonna be accented. I'm gonna take these same panels, and they're gonna go right up in there so that I can do my curves because I was really kind of curious of how I was going to be able to do that so I'm really happy that I kind of found a solution for that. I'm going to go ahead and get some of the spray foam so we can spray all the insulation in and then we can come back and continue. We are now at Lowe's. I just picked up all of their Loctite ceiling foam stuff so we're going to go ahead and get that all squared away. Now that we have all this we're going to get some more tongue and groove and then we can hopefully get some more stuff done on the van. We just checked out right now, as you guys can tell, I have 22 of these Loctite foam insulations. I wiped out their entire supply, one, because that's fun to say that I wiped out their entire supply, but also on the other hand, we needed it a lot because when we did the insulation around the fan, that used four cans, and that didn't even cover that much square footage, so I figured if we get 22, wipe them out, because I didn't want to have to run out and then come back and they not have it. So we're headed back to the house and we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get that all situated. I am filling everything up with insulation right now. As you guys can tell, I kind of started. I'm already on bottle number three, so it's good that I got so many. I'm gonna keep on working on this. This time I also wear gloves, as you guys can tell, because I learned from last time. It's like you get this sticky stuff on your hands and then it's just game over, guys. Game over. Anyways, I'm gonna keep working on this. I need my full attention on this. Okay, guys, I have just started insulating all of that side and I've done start of the roof as well. I'm gonna have to go to work and end it here today guys. If you guys like today's video please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe because that really helps me out guys. And if you guys want to see more of this van build or my Avalon or 350Z that I'm turning into a drift car, please make sure to subscribe. Anyways guys with nothing left to say, I guess it's time to end it.